Have you ever wondered about the process of designing branding? My name is Liz Mosley and I'm a branding designer based in the UK and in this eight part series, I'm going to be breaking down the branding process for you. And today in episode one, we're starting with creating a mood board and choosing a color palette for your brand. Before I start any branding project, I have a call with the client and I get them to fill in a pretty detailed questionnaire so that I can make sure that I've understood their needs and the brief correctly. For this series, I'm going to be designing the branding for a fictional cafe called Whisk, which is a warm and calming cafe that specializes in matcha. So let's head into Adobe Express and I will share with you some of my tips for making a strong mood board. Now, so that you don't have to start with a blank page, I've actually made you some mood board templates, which you can access below the video. And that is what I'm gonna be starting with now. So here are the templates that I've created for you. You'll see that there are four mood board ones and there's also three for your color palette, which we will come to shortly. You can pick whichever mood board template that you like. I'm going to go with this one and you'll notice on all of the templates, I've included a box where you can use Firefly to generate an image to go in your mood board. I find using generative AI in mood boards really helpful because sometimes I can't find the right image to get across the mood and feel of the brand that I want. I don't tend to use generative AI in any of my final um, outcomes for the branding that I give to the client, but I do find it really helpful in this process, as I've mentioned. I'm gonna start putting the images into my mood board, and then I'm gonna create something with Firefly. So for this one, I've got something saved to my desktop, so I'm just gonna quickly upload that from a device. And this was actually an AI generated image from Adobe Stock but I love the green foliage and I think the vibe really matches what I'm going for with the cafe. Next up, I'm gonna search in the stock images on Adobe Express and I'm gonna type in Calm Cafe and see what comes up. So I actually really love this one. So for my Firefly image, I wanna get a close up of a matcha cup. Close up of a cup of matcha in a rustic cup in a cozy but minimalist, mostly white, trendy cafe okay great we've got a little pot of matcha we can try a few oh i like the lights in the background on this one and the plant so let's go with this one i think it fits really nicely with that as well so i think you can see how it's starting to come together what i'm going to start to do is collecting colors like from the mood board to start inspiring the color palette so i'm going to come in here and just use the eyedropper tool and I'm just going to scan the images and look for the sort of shades that I want. Maybe a nice green like that. I'm thinking a navy blue would be really nice. So something like this. That's like a grey blue. And then some like very calm and warm neutrals. Maybe something like that. Let's get a lighter neutral here or maybe from the bedding. Let's see, something like, oh yeah, that's nice because it's got a green tone to it as well. And then I'm just going to duplicate this and add an extra color in. So you can adjust all of these templates as needed. And I'm going to go for another maybe paler neutral again, something a bit like that. So you can see a color palette starting to form. Um, so this is going to be the starting point. So in a second, we are going to work on our color palette, but this is my starting point. And here we have my mood board. Okay, now we've created our mood board in Adobe Express. I'm going to start pulling together a color palette, which I will use for the brand. There are no strict rules when it comes to color palettes, but I have come up with a bit of a formula that I tend to use and I'm going to walk you through it. I'm going to go into the mood board that I created and grab the colors from there. And then I'm going to bring it into one of these templates that I've created for the color palette. And I'm going to go with this one with the circles, but you can pick whichever one you think looks best. Now some of these colors I am going to want to use but I also want to add some others so that I've got some variety in my color palette. So what I'm going to start off by doing is grabbing this green because I really like that. I'm going to grab this sort of charcoal color because I think that will work as my off black and then I'm going to grab this sort of light beige for my off white but that just feels a bit too dark for me so I'm just going to go into here and into the color panel. I'm just going to adjust it and make it a bit lighter and a bit less yellow. So that's going to be my off-white and I think those are going to look really good together. Now I think I want a secondary sort of primary colour and I think I'm going to stick with a green but I'm going to go for something a bit brighter. So maybe something like that. So for this one I'm going to go for a sort of like dusty or dirty pink. So I'm just going to bring the slider over to the pink section and just start moving things around and just see until I find something that I'm happy with. I think something like that will look good. 
And then for this one, I think I might go a bit more purpley and get something a bit like that. Actually, they're a bit similar. So I'm going to tweak this one. So you'll see it's just a bit of a case of playing around. Let's get something a bit pinker for this one. And so there I am pretty happy with this color palette and how it's come together. And I think it's going to give us lots of flexibility in terms of our designs. But what I'm going to need to do is fill in this information. So I'm just going to show you with one and then you can go ahead and fill this in for all of them that you've got. To get my hex code, I'm going to select this circle, double click on the fill and just copy the hex code from here and paste it in. Now to get the CMYK value breakdowns, I am going to pop into Adobe Illustrator and I'm just going to click on here and you'll see it gives me the RGB and the CMYK breakdowns. So I can just copy those over. Once you've got your color palette um, and all the information, I would really recommend checking out Adobe Color for help with accessibility. I've put in all the hex codes into the color wheel here. Um, and I can click on this and it gives me the RGB. So you can also get the RGB from there if you want to. And then what I can do is head over to here on the right and click check for accessibility. And it's gonna flag up any issues for um, people who are colorblind. So these ones are working well, but my midtones together would cause issues for someone who's colorblind. I also want to check the contrast checker. So what I've done is I've put in the hex code of the cream background and of the dark green. And this just tells me whether the contrast is high enough for use on a website if people are reading on a screen. And thankfully this passes for all of them. But if I was to use probably this one, for example, if I get that um, hex code and go back and put that in here, you're gonna see that that is gonna fail. So it wouldn't be sensible to use those colors together as people might struggle to read it. So I hope you enjoyed this process of putting together a mood board and color palette for your branding project. And thanks for joining me for episode one of this eight part series. I'll be back in the second episode where I will be sharing tips for designing logos. Don't forget to grab the mood board template below and subscribe to Adobe Live for more useful videos like this.